When you go to the grocery store and buy you know, a cut of fish, you're buying a very small portion of the animal and you're leaving behind or you're not seeing a whole bunch of other things. So instead of relying on uh, an animal to grow cells and divide cells and, and proliferate to, so, to the point where we can harvest a piece of tissue, we're trying to do that in a, in a flask, in an in vitro system, so that we don't need to rely on a whole animal to produce just a small piece of tissue. I never thought about cellular agriculture being a research theme in my lab in a common school of medicine. The main focus of our lab is to purify protein and characterize its function. Then you can use it to produce antibodies, new antibiotics and drugs. CAM has this idea that the methodology that we have been using and perfecting over the years is a good segue into cellular agriculture. And this is the good thing about science, is that you never know where that methodology is going to take you. One of the biggest things right now is truly the cost. We're trying to reduce the cost that it takes to grow the cells uh, in cell culture systems. We're currently working with um, multiple cell lines. So we're, we're working with a cell line derived from rainbow trout. We're also going to be working with a, a cell line derived from sea bass uh, in the near future. And then another species of fish called bluegill. We use microbes to create fish proteins that we then uh, give to fish cells that tell the fish cells to start growing and dividing. So one of the advantages of our research is because we're using microbes to produce those proteins, uh, we can do it at a much lower cost than you know, what's traditionally done, which is using animal systems to produce those signaling molecules. The research that we're doing will be of great interest to you know, companies, startups, and researchers who are already creating the three-dimensional pieces of meat. I'm always a little hesitant to make predictions about when I think these products are coming to market, so I rely on the, the startup companies that are working in this field and producing these kind of proof of concept and pilot scale projects. And many of them predict that they'll be selling to restaurants within the next two to three years. Broader availability will be um, probably, I would say, five to ten years. And the reason why I say a bit longer is because you know, there's not really anything like this on the market. So there's no you know, easy comp comparable product to say, oh yeah, we can follow that exact regulatory framework. This is something entirely new, so it will require some new legislation uh, you know, probably all across the world before the products can really you know, be accepted and, and distributed to grocery stores.